back in the mechanical room. So this unit here is uh, cooling a kitchen and it's the discharge 58 degrees, which is kind of warm. So by the time it hits the supplies, uh, it's like 60, 70 ish. So yeah, so we got something going on with it. Might be low on charge. So let's go on the roof and take a look. So here we go. All right, so we found the unit. Um, so somebody removed the low ambient kit and put a peanut on there. So as I was unscrewing this, I feel like it's under pressure. So yeah, why did the unit just cut off? Yeah, so I think it just cut off on high pressure. This fan doesn't seem to be cycling that often. about this popping off because it's really hard to turn. Yeah, there was definitely pressure on there. It's not leaking. So something's up with the fan. So we're, I'm going to disconnect it. Disconnect this and hook it directly into the contact here. And just verify that the fan motor is working. So I think what's happening is the pressure is too high. It's short cycling because it's tripping the high pressure switch and um, what do you call it? And when it is running, the pressure's so high, it drives the suction line a little bit higher than it normally should be. So I think what's happening is it's just the evaporative, or the saturation temperature for the evaporator, which we usually shoot for 40-ish, is probably a little bit higher. Um, that's what I'm thinking is going on. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and crank it on with the fan. We're gonna check the charge, then we'll hook it up the way it was and see what it does and go from there. Uh, so I think that's what the issue is. So the fix would be to put one with a lower pressure. Um, and uh, in the meantime, we'll leave this disconnected. All right, so it's about 78, 79 degrees out here right now. That's our ambient temperature. Our suction pressure is at 132. 307 on our high super heats at 20 15 degrees of subcool looks good to me um, vapor saturation is 45 so let's go down and see how she's cooling now and then we'll restore it back to the way it was and see what it looks like so it was 76 in here so it's definitely dropped discharge is 53.3 and it's still dropping so that made a big difference yeah so looking at the charge chart here 14 is our target so we're there uh, I would say the charge is fine I think because the fan cycling uh, is messing things up so I, I can't remember if I actually made a video on this I know I recorded one but I don't know if I posted it but Basically, the train has their own proprietary low ambient controller, so it's got an ambient temperature, and it's got a coil sensor, and it, it went bad, and I'd recommend to replace it, and I never heard anything from it, but now we have this here. So this is much cheaper, so I think, I think the pressure on that's too high, and it's causing the high pressure trip, like it, because it's, it's set to cut in at 400 psi so it probably passes it and i think the high pressure switch is set for 450 psi so i think it just trips for a second because it happened in front of me I, unfortunately i wasn't videoing it but basically it tripped it shut off and then it came back on and it shut off and came back on and so it was doing some weird stuff uh not good for the compressor so i think that this is just too high i think we need to go with uh, something that's a little bit lower uh, or just put an oem one back in there i'm going to leave it disconnected for now because it's supposed to be 80s for the next probably till till freaking winter so um yeah so it's not going to be an issue until we start getting colder temperatures so we'll leave it disconnected for now maybe i'll see if i can find one with a little bit lower pressure and then uh, we'll go from there uh, okay so we have that low ambient peanut thing connected again now it just kicked on so but yeah look at that it's not supposed to cut in until 400 PSI. So when we get 400 PSI, we should get a fan. Oh great, we got a waspy buddy. 
don't bite me. Yeah, look at this. It's supposed to kick on at 400 PSI. Look, look at where we're at. Yeah, it's going to trip the high pressure switch. So that peanut's no good. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and quote them for the OEM uh, controller and I'm going to tell them to stop being cheap because I think what happened was they asked if there was a cheaper option and that's what they got and it only lasted I think this I think I was here last year so yeah anyway so anyway hopefully this helps you out and uh, gets you out of a jam in this situation but whenever you're dealing with a low ambient control or a head pressure controller it's good to bypass it and check your charge then just to see what's up then verify if it's if it's actually cutting in and cutting out properly so this was supposed to cut in at 400 psi as we saw it definitely passed that so it's not working um, they're very cheap um, and usually you can wire them directly into the uh what do you call it into the fan motor with through high voltage or you can connect it to a relay and do it that way um, i'm start i started thinking about it because i i've done it this way too but uh you know, you have this tiny little wire exposed to the sun, so if that thing, you know, if the insulation falls apart, now you have high voltage exposed. So probably a good idea to just you do low voltage through that and hook it up to a relay. So um, something that I thought of recently, um, I was thinking about it, and I think somebody commented in the in, in the comments below about some stuff about that. So. I think I'm going to start just sticking with putting relays in there and keeping the outside stuff low voltage. But anyway, enough about that. So hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like the tools I used, uh, visit my store on Amazon and pick them up for yourself. So thanks for watching.